Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here, bringing to you another moderately interesting video about retro gaming curiosities. One of the most popular subjects on this channel has always been when it comes to looking at various pieces of Sega hardware. So today we are once again going on yet another Sega related journey. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the Sega Mega Jet. Yeah. At the dawn of the 90s, when it came to gaming around the world, a few things were very clear. Firstly, Sega had risen to the top and were market leaders when it came to console gaming in various regions with their highly successful 16-bit Mega Drive platform. Secondly, in the world of handheld gaming, an additional war was also in force, with Sega battling against Nintendo to try and reach the top of the handheld gaming mounting. In terms of the living room, Nintendo and Sega were neck and neck throughout the period. However, when it came to gaming on the go, the simple yet practical monochrome Game Boy was vastly outselling Sega's much more powerful full colour backlit Game Gear. Reflecting back, this was primarily down to one reason, the terrible battery life. The magnificent looking Sega device took a greedy gas guzzling 6 AA batteries and when you powered the system on, you would get a few hours playtime at best. Often the Sega Game Gear would run out of juice before I had even finished flying to my destinations. So due to this, the Game Gear was permanently relegated to my bedroom, only to be experienced with the use of an AC adapter to avoid the annoyance of a play experience being cut short halfway through. If I had of lived in Japan on the other hand, and boarded an airline, there is a chance I would have been playing on Sega devices instead. Sega, as a company, certainly did not appear to be frightened of trying out quirky new ideas when it came to releasing various pieces of hardware. In the first half of the 90s alone, the Game Gear was on the market alongside various models of the 8-bit Master System, multiple different Mega Drives, the Sega Saturn, Mega CD and 32X. There was plenty of hardware about, and the Megajet is another addition to this crazy list. The Sega Megajet was Sega's second handheld gaming console, following that of the Sega Game Gear. The Megajet differed greatly though, as rather than being an 8-bit platform, the Megajet on the other hand was a fully functioning portable version of the Sega Mega Drive. The Megajet was first available simply on a rental basis, where if you took a flight using a Japan airline, you could rent a Megajet to play on board during your travels. Interestingly, although a handheld and an extremely comfortable to hold one I may add, the device is an oddity in the fact that it does not feature its own screen and instead was usable by plugging the technology into an armrest on your flight seats. As you can see, the system's controller, like other handhelds, is integrated into one single unit, although the system does need an external power supply to run. Once plugged in, the Megajet could be played on small LCD televisions, installed on board all of Japan's airline's aircrafts. This was an interesting, innovative way for travellers to pass their time during long flights. This is a fantastic example of in-flight entertainment and far superior to anything I was offered when flying with Malaysian Airlines recently. Oh. The Sega Mega Jet accepted all Japanese Mega Drive cartridges, so Japan Airline customers had the opportunity to bring and play any of their own Mega Drive cartridges once on board. In addition to this, it is said that the airline would allow flyers to rent a selection of four different titles on each flight. It is recorded that two of the games available were Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Monaco GP2. Moving on from Japan airline rental offerings, the Mega Jet was apparently commercially released in Japan in March of 1994 at a cost of 123 US dollars. Not many changes were made to this device that differed from the one available on the airline, 
Although, this slight revision could be experienced using an AC adapter, as opposed to needing to be plugged into an in-flight armrest. Further, from this, another variant of the platform was released known as the Alpine version of the system, which came bundled for promotion with the Alpine TVE M015 in-dash monitor, which also came packed with Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Because this version of the device was intended to be a vehicle mounted gadget, it came with a dedicated cigarette adapter as opposed to an AC adapter, like the other commercially released variant. Outside of all of this, there is also some interesting information within a thread on the Assembler Games forum, which states that apparently over 100 megadrift units went up for sale on the Edge Magazine forum some years ago. It is strongly rumoured that these 100 units were acquired and sold by Indonesian sea pirates, of all things. To quote one poster, known as Twin Fee, in 2006 he posted that the story was they'd all been found as surplus supply in a warehouse belonging to a Japanese airline which was moving or no longer in operation or something. The guy selling them wanted them all got in one go. There was no mention of it being illegal. We even saw photos inside the warehouse. The guy didn't have the time to list them all individually. If I recall correctly, there were around 100 units at a cost of 45 pounds covering the unit and five pounds covering the shipping. Sadly, other than a brief mention in the magazine, there is no record of a transaction due to the fact that the Edge forums were pretty much always in beta and got pulled down about a year after the incident. Anyway, the buy was a success and everybody got their units. It was all orchestrated by one guy in the UK and I remember it being nothing short of a nightmare for him to make sure everyone got their unit. I wish I could tell you more, but this was in either late 2002 or early 2003, and my memory of the incident is fuzzy. I no longer have a unit as I sold it with everything else when I went travelling. It's a shame I never kept it, but just as now, I had nothing to prove where it came from. At the time, it didn't seem like a big deal. It was just a straightforward group buy. Quite how the story got twisted the way it did, we'll never know. In regards to the quirky Sega Mega Jet and its colourful history, the development of this device would, by 1995, result in the release of the Sega Genesis Nomad, which was a fully portable version of the 16-bit platform, complete with a backlit screen and the ability to be powered by AA batteries. Sadly though, the Nomad suffers from all the same issues as the Sega Game Gear. It is expensive, heavy and eats up its batteries in a matter of just a few hours. All in all, making it another questionable piece of Sega hardware. Despite this though, we would never have got this interesting footnote in gaming history if it was not for the important steps the Mega Jet made before it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the Sega Mega Jet, an extremely unique part of Sega's hardware portfolio, which potentially at one point got plundered and sold off by Indonesian sea pirates. When we hear stories of gaming piracy, it is not usually anecdotes like this that come to mind. But if the stories are true, then the Mega Jet is the biggest victim of piracy in all of gaming history. So, Long live the Mega Jet! Yar! If you enjoy today's content, then please subscribe. There are plenty of videos like this on my channel, covering various obscure consoles and even videos about platforms that were planned but cancelled altogether. I upload a brand new video every week, so please be sure to leave a comment and give your thoughts on today and what you'd like to see next. Finally, my channel Top Pack Gaming Man is funded by the fantastic support I receive from my amazing, wonderful, fantastic Patreon benefactors. I will always be here as long as you are here supporting me. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, Lawrence C, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahaley, 
Andrew Bazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, Mark S. Hines, The Gaming Muso, Quang DX, Spongebob B, Michael Baker, and all of my other patrons. Thank you for changing my life forever. <laughs>